Hello, my name's Sarah Lawson and this is my lesson on how to make a resin cheese board. So the resin cheese board that we're going to be making today is this one here. Now what we're going to do is in the class today, I'm going to be using the ocean colours, so a dark blue, an aqua and a gold. You don't have to use those colours. If decor at home, you would prefer to use another colour combination, then that's fine. You can use all different colour combinations and also you can use all different boards. The board that I'm going to be using today is one that I bought from Kmart. Um, you can get boards from lots of different places. Uh, you can get them from Kmart, you can get them from Big W. So there's lots of different places. Just have a look around at the one that you prefer. Another one here, but that's using the aqua and the pink, which looks really nice with the gold. This is another one that you can get from Kmart and that's the circular. It's still the paddle with the handle, but what I've done there is I've used black, red and the gold, which is a really nice board too. So that's a really nice combination also in regards to colours. So all the materials that you will need is you'll need a set of gloves, You'll need some cups to stir your resin with. You'll also need six of these. So these are small little cups, so you'll need six of those. You'll need some paddle pop sticks for stirring your resin, for stirring the paint into the resin, and also some tape. Now the colors that I'm using is I'm going to be using these three colors here. So that's the white, the aqua, and the purple with also a gold. Now the resin that I'm going to be using is this resin here. Now this is art resin. Um, this is a really nice resin to use. You can get lots of different resins. This is the one that I use. This is actually classed as food safe. Um, it is on their website. When it comes to your cheese board, uh, what I would do is when you're doing your cheese board, it's best only to do a section of your cheese board. Um, if you could do too much of your cheese board, so for instance, if you've got a cheese board this size and you only do a small section, it's just to decorate the board. It's not actually to do the full board as such with the resin. If you have the resin too far onto the board, what will happen is when people are cutting their cheese, it will actually scar the resin if they're using knives on the resin. So it's best just to do a small section. So basically three of those cups go underneath your board so you can rest your board on so when you pour your resin your resin's pouring over the side and it's not going to pool around the corners of your board we need a little bit of tape just to put around the board to where we're going to be pouring the resin so basically this is what we're after so see how my tape runs all the way around the side and what that means is when I put my resin onto my board it's going to run over the side and it's going to protect the side and it's also going to protect the underside if your tape doesn't stick that well on the corners don't worry too much about it don't stress about it too much basically just if there is a bit of moisture in the air you'll find that your tape won't stick very well that's all it's more just to protect the underside what you can do is if you do get resin on the underside of your board you can always sand it back so don't be too pedantic with the tape it's just to protect it as much as you can so when mixing resin what we need to do is we've got our resin which is this one here that we're going to be using and of course our three colors when it comes to doing your board it's always good to use three colors or less if you use more than three colors what will happen is because you're only using or working in a small area with resin if you put too many colors on and mix them through then from there what you'll find is the colors will mix too much and then all the colors will turn very muddy so what you're best off doing is using three or less colors so they keep nice and bright and then you won't have too many colors on your board. If you're working in bigger areas, such as like, let's say if you were doing a, um, a big 
uh, Lazy Susan. You, you can use bigger colours, or sorry, more colours then, um, because you're using a bigger area. But the colours that I'm going to be using today are just these three colours because I'm going with the ocean theme. Now when it comes to these colours, basically it's just an acrylic colour that we're using. I get these from Silly Sollies, it's just a Montmartre brand. As long as you're using a free flow um, paint and not a hard body paint, you need something that's going to be able to have a nice consistency that's going to mix really well with your resin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gloves on. That's really super important. So popping my gloves on now. When you're using resin, it's always good to actually have your gloves and have gloves on as much as you can. When it comes to health, um, always check with your doctor if you've got any skin allergies or anything like that. It's always good to check to make sure with resin um, that you don't have any allergic reaction. Um, resin is a two-part epoxy um, and it is a chemical. So basically, it is an epoxy resin. So please be aware that it's always good to check to make sure that you don't have any skin allergies or anything like that before you use resin. The resin that we use is an artist resin, so it is designed for artists, so it's very, very good. It's not an industrial resin, um, and this is one that you can get from art shops. Okay, so mixing resin. So basically what it is, is a two-part epoxy resin. So basically one part's the resin and the other part's the hardener. As soon as they mix, and of course when they combine and you mix them, that's when they start to cure. So what we need to do is we need to have a 50-50 mix with those so that's what I'm going to do now so I've got my two cups the other thing that you can do is you can use a measuring container too so you can make sure it is very very important to get the exact amount of both so they are a 50 50 mix so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour one part into the other part and mix them through you don't have to mix them through vigorously it's just so you have Mix them enough so they're completely combined. What I mean by that is it still needs to be mixed very, very well, but you don't have to mix it really, really fast because what will happen is you'll cause more bubbles. So I'll show you how to mix it and what's a good consistency of mixing. Make sure you've got every last little bit. If you are using two cups to mix, so you can level them, so you know that you do have the same amount, make sure that you get, when you pour one into the other, make sure that you get every last little bit out of that other, so they are still a 50-50 mix. And then we stir them together and mix them well. What will actually happen is when you're mixing your resin, you'll find that the two parts, when they mixed first, that they are quite cloudy. Once it actually starts to become clear, that's when you know that the two parts have been mixed correctly. I always like to mix my resin for about three to five minutes, even if I've only got a small consistency. Probably not five minutes, that might be a little bit long. If I'm got a, a larger amount I will but for something like this I'll mix for about three minutes at least then I know the two parts are definitely mixed it is really really super important that the two parts are mixed previous or prior to actually using it on your board otherwise if they're not mixed then of course what will happen is the resin won't cure well um, or it will become quite sticky and you will have to scrape it off and restart. So it is always good to double make sure that you have mixed them correctly and mix them just that little bit longer. Now resin does need over 20 degrees to cure properly. Um, if you are working in colder climates, it will still cure, but it will cure over a longer time. Normally resin will cure between six to 12 hours um, in those temperatures of around that 20 degrees. So mixing, making sure the two are mixed. And as you see by looking at that, there are quite some bubbles in there but that's okay it does tend to self-settle so here's the resin so see how it does have 
some bubbles in it. It will self settle and you can also just use a little bit of heat, not too much, but just a little bit of heat once you've run your resin to take those extra bubbles out. The other thing that you can do is if you don't have a heat gun or something at home, I sometimes just run my hairdryer over it just to pop the bubbles. As I said, it doesn't have to be too, you don't wanna burn the resin, you just wanna add that little tiny bit of heat. Um, so keep the hairdryer on low when you do so and Hold it at least 10 centimetres away from the resin when you are adding heat to it. Um, so what you're best off doing is doing it just like that or what you can do is if you don't want to use your hairdryer or you don't have a heat gun at home you can always get a toothpick and what you can do is you can just poke those bubbles and that will actually take the bubbles out. So I think my resin is good stirred now. I have been stirring my resin for about maybe three minutes now so I'm thinking it's good and it's it, it's uh, properly stirred in to be able to use. Okay here's my board again now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my board aside just so I can show you how to mix your acrylic paint into the resin before you pour. So these are my cups that I use for underneath my board. So I'm just gonna pop those aside because these are the little cups that I'm going to be using for my three colors. And then of course I've got my paddle sticks, my paddle pop sticks to be able to mix my colors in with my resin. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna pour it into each of my cups I still have a little bit left over, but that's okay. It's always good just to save that and put that aside, just in case you need it for any little touch-ups or anything like that. So I'm just gonna pop that aside, and then I'm going to be working with my three colors here. So the first color that I'm gonna mix in is the white. So that's the tube there, that's the white that I'm going to be using. Now when it comes to adding your paint into your cup of resin. See, I've only got it about half full. So that's all you really need. You don't need too much resin because you're only actually working on a small area. So you don't have to fill your cup all the way. Now this is the paint here. So just in regards to that, you only need a pea size little bit of paint in your resin because you've only got a small cup of re resin so you only need about a pea size of paint. If you use too much paint what will actually happen is the resin will become quite gluggy and unusable. It really needs to be a nice flowy consistency and it needs to be about the consistency of let's say unwhipped cream. It can be a little bit thicker than that but not too much thicker. It still needs to be able to have enough flow where you can move it around on your board. It doesn't need to be runny but it does need to have the consistency so you can still move it. And remembering also that I'm always there for you. If you do have any questions or anything like that, please don't hesitate to send me a message um, through my website and I can get back to you with any questions that you have in regards to your lesson. Just because resin can be quite quite dirty to use um, or messy more the word is um, so basically what you need to do is I always have a plastic bag nice and close to be able to throw my rubbish away and just in regards to this this is just a fruit tray that I have it's always good to have something underneath your resin just to be able to catch it you don't want to be working on let's say a really nice table or something like that and the resin falls onto the table or anything of material because resin is quite hard to get out of material um, so when working and when doing your boards or working with resin make sure that you always have something like a drop sheet underneath where you're working Working, so you can just wrap that up and throw that away when you're finished. So now we're going to mix the next colour. So the next colour I'm going to mix is my aqua. 
that is really important to try and have a tiny amount of paint and as I said try and make it about the size of a pea. Make sure you mix your paint really really well also. The reason for that being is when you go to pour your resin onto your board what you don't want is you don't want big pieces of paint still in the resin as such so make sure you mix your paint in fully and there's no big pieces of paint still in your resin before you pour. So make sure that it's nice and smooth, still a good consistency of course because it is a pouring medium so you must be able to move it around and be able to move it with the gravity of tilting your board. So there's the consistency again and that one now is good also to use. So I've got my two colours, I just need my third colour now and my third colour is my dark blue. Okay, so now I've got my three colours already mixed up and I'm ready to pour. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my colours aside. I've still got my leftover, so just in case I need that, I'm also going to put that aside with my three colours in which I've mixed. Put my cup stack down. So what I'm going to do is when it comes to pouring, Basically, you're welcome to just put spots on. You can do whatever you like when it comes to where to put your colours and also what colours to put on first. If you do want to follow the ocean theme, then this is what we're doing today. Um, and we're going to be running them in lines and then mixing them through because when you do have a look at the ocean you've always got your darker colours to the deeper and then of course as it moves up the sand or up onto the shore it does the colours become lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my dark colour on first then I'm going to which is my dark blue and then I'm going to put my aqua and then I'm going to put my white so I can make it look a little bit like the ocean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my dark blue and I'm going to pour that on. I'm just going to put that and put it aside and then with my finger I'm just going to move it around on the board to fill in those areas. and spread it out a little bit more so it fills up a little bit more room on my board. Now I'm going to do my next colour which is my aqua. So with the aqua I'm going to do the same and I'm just going to follow along where the dark blue is. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to mix those two slightly. Just to blend them in. Now the next colour I'm going to do is I'm going to do my white. Now as white, what I'm going to do is because I'm doing more of an ocean theme, when I run my white, I'm actually going to make it curly. So I'm going to pour it, not in a straight line, I'm actually going to pour it so it's in a swirly line. And that just gives the representation of the actual wave coming up onto the shore. I've still got a little bit of white left over so I'm going to pop that aside with my mixture too, so my spare mixture just in case I need that a little bit later on. Then I'm going to get my finger and mix those two together. Now that looks really nice just on its own. Um, as you can see so that looks really nice and that once it starts to settle you can leave your board like that 
or you can actually add the gold which I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is because also I've been using my fingers to work my resin, I'm going to take these gloves off. So it's always good to have a second pair in case you need them because they're dirty. And what I'm going to be doing is adding my gold. So I'm going to take those off so I've got clean hands for that because I'm not going to be touching the resin at this point. So the gold that I'm going to use is actually a little bit different to the paints that we were using. This is actually an alcohol ink. Now the alcohol ink doesn't need to be mixed in with the resin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the alcohol ink directly onto my board and then from there I'm going to move it around and I'm going to move it around with a straw. It's always good when you're using alcohol ink to give it a good shake up first. And it will have a little ball inside, so just make sure that you can hear that moving around and then you know that your alcohol ink is fully mixed before using. And just slightly. Dropping it in certain spots just onto your board you don't have to use much at all this is a bigger bottle because I do classes if you want you can get the smaller bottles they're about seven dollars if you go into any art shop just ask them for the alcohol inks and you can get all different colors now to move around the gold what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a straw you can actually use a heat gun if you like but on the safe side, it's completely up to you. If you do have a heat gun, you can use that. But I'm gonna use the straw because what I wanna do is I want to actually get like a marbling effect. Remembering also when you do use the straw that don't breathe in, of course, the resin and the alcohol ink. It is not, it is quite toxic. Um, when I say toxic, I it is a chemical, so you don't wanna be breathing it in. What you need to do is take a deep breath and then from there, just blow it around. Take a deep breath. And continue to do that until you've worked out and you're happy with your board to where the gold has moved to. You can also, when you're doing that, not just moving the gold around, but you can move the other colours around too, which gives it a really nice marbling effect. The other thing that you can do is when you're actually using uh, resin, because it is also a pouring medium, it's going to move with gravity too. So what you can do is you can pick up your board and you can tilt it around if you like to actually move the resin around on your board. One thing always to remember when it comes to working with resin, remembering also that you don't want to overwork it. So once you're happy with what you have, walk away and leave it. There's only one other thing to always check and that's to make sure it's sitting level. Because it takes six to eight hours to dry, remember it does need to be completely level. Otherwise what will happen is if it's not level, the colors will pour off the board. A couple of things that you need to remember, make sure that you leave your cups underneath because what will happen is the resin will continue to pour off the side. So always leave it just as it is at the moment with the cups underneath and the tape around the side. So it's not actually, if it dries, it's not gonna stick to whatever you have on your drop sheet. Now the other thing is, is when it comes to taking the tape off, I'm going to leave that for about 15 minutes and then from there I'm going to take the tape off. I just want to leave it just until it's not so runny. What will actually happen as soon as I've mixed 
the resin, it will start to cure straight away. You do have about a five to 10, probably about a 10 minute working time in this climate. Um, depending on in the cooler climates, of course, then you've got a little bit more time to work with it. But at the moment, you're looking at roughly about five to 10 minutes. By 10 minutes, you'll find that your resin will become quite bluggy and unusable. And from there, you don't wanna use it anyway because it's going to damage your board. If you've got anything else, such as like, let's say anything wood, um, a little tray or something like that, if you do have any leftover, all you need to do is just do exactly the same process again, and you can use that resin instead of throwing it away. The resin does actually go a long way. So remembering also that if you do mix from a from a cup if you do mix about that much you'll find that you may be able to get a couple of boards from it even if it's one a little bit smaller such as this one that I showed you before which is a bruschetta board what you can do if you like is you can mix about that much resin so that's one part of A one part of B to get about that much in your cup um, once you've mixed the two together and you should have enough to be able to do a cheese board and also a bruschetta board in the same colours so therefore you've got a set. The other thing that you can do is you can also do coasters too. Um, the coasters you can get, wood coasters you can get from Kmart and you can do a set of those so instead of doing a bruschetta board if you do have some left over or you want to make a set so with the cheese board and like let's say two or four uh, coasters then of course all you need to do is tape up the coasters and you can do another you can do that too i will have another resin class coming through with the coasters so you can see that also so what i'm going to do now is i've waited about 10 minutes my resins slimmy sort of semi stopped running it might be slightly a little bit runny but that's okay um what i'm going to do is just for you so i can show you how to pull the tape off i'm going to show that now for you so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to start from one end and i'm just going to slowly move the tape all the way around grab the other end And then with that, I'm going to put that straight into the bin. As I said, don't worry too much in regards to the underside. What you can do is once the resin has cured com completely, so right now it's about 12 o'clock where I am, what I'm going to do is I'll leave my board to dry. By tomorrow morning, I've got my tape off. I've got it sitting on its three cups. I'll leave that and then tomorrow morning I know that my resin will be completely dry and I will be able to sand the underside of my board if it does have any runs or any of the resin runs over and starts to pool underneath on the underside of my board. The underside of my board isn't too bad because I've actually put that tape there and I've protected it. If you do get resin on the underside, don't stress too much. You can always rub it back with a baby wipe or wait for it to dry and then just sand it back. So looking at my board, I'm really happy with that. I think that's turned out really nice with the gold too. The gold looks beautiful. I'm gonna let that dry now and then come back and have a look at it, like I said, um, in the morning when it's completely dry to see whether I need to do any sanding. Thank you so much for being a part of this lesson. I do appreciate that and hopefully um, in the future I will have some more lessons coming in regards to our coasters um, and also some acrylic painting classes too. So thank you very much and uh, happy creating. Thank you, bye.